good afternoon to those of you who are joining us already. We're just going to give it a couple minutes here and give everyone a chance to get signed on. We do have a decent sized group registered for today's session. Um, so while attendees roll in here, we'll just wait a couple of minutes and then we'll get started. Thank you. All right, well, while attendees can continue to join us, I'm just going to give a quick intro so that we can get started. I want to thank you all for joining us for today's session with Natalie Kenny Marquis. This is course two of our six part series, Auditing Your Digital Existence with Natalie. And we um, will continue to run this session, this uh, series through March. So please feel free to join us. Our sessions are every other Monday from 1 to 2 p.m. on Zoom. Um, you will receive a follow-up email uh, following this session. That will either go out later today or tomorrow morning. And I will include all of the resources you see throughout this session, but also I'll include the links to register to join us for um, the following sessions for the series. Uh, we also have a handful of community partners who have helped us co-host today's session along with the other uh, five parts of the series. So I will include links to their websites in that follow-up email as well so that you can check out uh, their websites and find out more information about their organizations. Today's session is also being recorded. So if there's something that you may have missed or wanna go back and listen to again, you will have the opportunity to do that. And that link to the recording will go out in that follow-up email as well. So I will go ahead and hand it over to Natalie and we can get started. Thank you so much. Uh... My name is Natalie Kenny Marquez. I'm the owner of Grow Marketing and Communications uh, located in Champaign, Illinois. I'm so glad to um, have you all on today's call. Um, if you were with us last um, course, we talked about developing a marketing strategy. So just a really good overview of the other courses. And today we're gonna dive into um, auditing your digital existence. So your digital existence gives your brand um, what I consider really like the ideal platform to communicate with your customers, which is really important for all of you that are embarking on um, an e-commerce component of your business, or maybe you already have e-commerce and you're expanding that um, part of your business. Your digital existence gives you the opportunity to really set the narrative on who you are as a brand and work to set yourself apart from competitors, which is really important when you're doing this all online. So more than just your website, uh, which we'll talk about in the next course specifically, uh, today we're gonna go through um, all aspects of your digital existence and talk about the different um, touch points that your consumer may have with your brand online. And um, you know we're gonna talk about things that are in your control that you can control um, online, things that are maybe out of your control, uh, social media, online reviews, um, so a little bit of a preview of what's to come in the rest of the courses, but really the goal by the end uh, of the hour is to help you put your best foot forward and get through an audit of your digital existence. I, I generally lead my classes pretty casually, um, and so I would love if you ever have any questions to go ahead and drop them in the chat. I'll keep an eye on them, and so will Jordan, but I want to make sure that we're getting your questions answered. And I'll also ask you a few questions throughout the, um, the course. So stay tuned. All right, before we go any further with uh, auditing your digital existence, I want you to audit your brand. I want you to get into a mindset or a place where you can really think about your brand as the priority and a great way to start your digital audit. And so to do this, on the slide, I um, put a bunch of information on here. It's kind of small, but I put the brand guidelines for an organization I have the pleasure of working with called Buy Fresh by Local Illinois. So what we did is put together a, a set of brand guidelines that indicate um, the vertical and horizontal logos, 
an icon logo, which you could use, you know, for social media when there's like a, a circle profile image or something. Um, we put together a color palette of primary and secondary colors. Uh, we put together font pairings that we like to use and all sorts of um, design work. Uh, we put examples of imagery, so photos and, and things like that, that we like. Um, you know, we stick to not using a lot of filters or anything like that and letting the colors of the the food and the agriculture really come through. Um, and then we also um, put together messaging so that we had a tagline, um, you know, a elevator pitch or short description and some key um, benefits that are all vetted that we could use at any point in time. And one of the reasons why I really encourage you to put something together like this for your business is that it really helps to set guidelines for everything you do online. Whether you're building a website, um, you know, curating your social media, uh, putting together talking points for an event, um, say you're, um, you know, putting together a social media um, campaign and it's nice to have talking points already put together. If you use Canva, which I know a lot of folks use Canva, um, if you're not familiar with it, um, just Google Canva, the platform will come up. Uh, it's free most of the time, but there are upgrades and opportunities if you're a nonprofit um, to have uh, some free resources, but you can even set your brand in Canva so that you always have those colors, those fonts and those uh, and your logos at your fingertips so that you're super consistent with everything that you put together. Um, I'm curious to know if anybody on the call has brand guidelines compiled or something close to um, that you can use or reference. I'd love to know if anybody's doing anything like this. Um, let's see, Colleen said, if you use Canva much, it's well worth the monthly fee for the upgrades. I totally agree with you, Colleen, especially um, being able to resize things is really helpful, but um, I think it's a great start in having something put together like this as you really develop or redevelop your digital existence, your website, your e-commerce website, things like that. Cynthia says, yes, we love our branding guide. Awesome. Um, super helpful to have. There's even some templates in Canva that you can use to start building out your brand guidelines that are really helpful. So um, one of the, so these are all internal things, putting together brand guidelines, um, being consistent in how you use uh, your fonts, your colors, your imagery, your logo, um, having all of that are things that you have control over that you can directly relate to your brand values that you can be consistent about. On the flip side with your brand, there are some external things for you to think about. Um, that's, you know, what, um, how people use your website, customer reviews and responses, social media, public relations. It's really important to do kind of an external audit of how those things are going and are they consistent with your brand? Um, you know, take a look at your website, your social media. When you have your brand guidelines, you can set the tone for how you're represented in your website, on your social, even in public uh, relations. One of the things that I like to do with my clients is put together a little kit that we can send out to um, our media contacts that is an extension kind of of our brand guidelines, um, but it has a document in it that has our website, our social media handles for the business, um, has a couple different versions of our logo in that. Um, we offer up a couple of images or even short little video um, B-rolls or something like that to where if we want to pitch a story to the news or send something to radio or let folks know that maybe we have a sale coming up or to get people, you know, to link back to our website, they can use the items in our kit and be consistent about representing us on their media platforms. Um, has anybody ever put a kit like this together? Um, a long time ago, they used to be called media kits. Um, I still kind of refer to them as that, but it's nice to have it together, not just for media, but, um, you know, I, I think, a lot of folks that are getting into e-commerce or updating their e-commerce also attend farmers markets or pop-ups or have brick and mortar businesses. And so there's a lot of opportunity to utilize a kit like this in other areas and just build on that consistency. So you have a very strong brand presence 
digitally. Um, let's see, Maggie says uh, that they have uh, some brand guidelines that were put together for them by Pixo. Pixo is awesome, um, very cool. Evelyn wants to create something like this. And um, let's see, John Jay created some EPKs back in the amateur film producer days. Awesome, seeing a lot of similarities. Yes, very cool. All right, so a little bit about internal brand, you know, being consistent, stick to your brand values, um, be sure that you are um, really representing yourself consistently across everything that you do. Uh, and then external, are there ways that you can control um, how your brand is represented externally? You know, maybe think about putting a kit together. So next um, is assessing your online identity. The first step is to assess um, how it aligns with your goals and values. And I know there's tools like um, that you can set Google alerts or you can use a platform called Brand Yourself or Mention to monitor your name, your brand or um, keywords that you want to use or that you use in your um, online presence. You can also search for yourself on different social media platforms and see what comes up or search for your business. Sorry. Um, you know, really the point of doing that is to look for any kind of inconsistencies, gaps or red flags that might affect your image or your reputation. Um, for example, are your profiles updated and accurate? Um, do you have any negative or inappropriate content or comments that you need to take care of? You know, we're really going to spend like the last, uh, the final class, course number six on customer reviews. So we'll get into like the real nitty gritty of it then, but I want you to start thinking about that and maybe doing a little bit of um, detective work on your business online. And so you can kind of be ready for that. And when you come and join us again in course six. Additionally, as you start to audit your existence online, I want you to note if you have any kind of duplicate or inactive accounts I've actually seen this happen more times than I would like with clients who have had, you know, an employee start and manage a, a, an account online for the business, but then the employee leaves the company and doesn't transfer everything over. And then there's two profiles. I've seen this happen on Google My Business. I've seen this happen on Facebook and Instagram before. And it's really frustrating because it's it's hard to be consistent and answer questions and, um be available to your customers if you have duplicate or inaccurate information out there online. Um, I am curious to know, and I would like for you to um, answer in the chat, if you've done a Google search or some kind of search of your business name before, and I'm curious to know if anything popped up that surprised you, something maybe you hadn't seen before or didn't know about. Um, if you haven't done that or, Maybe you do do that all the time. How often do you do it? Um, is it something you do you know, monthly or quarterly or annually? I'm just curious to know if you have a timeline set up that you keep to make sure that you're keeping tabs on your online identity. Jackie says she checks monthly. That's great. Um, I don't particularly have a... Uh, schedule that I would recommend that you use um, to keep tabs on these types of things, but I think monthly would be great. One thing that I like to do is set myself um, meetings or block a timeout in my calendar so that I get a reminder either at the same time every week or the same time every month to check on things like this, just to make sure that nothing is slipped by. Um, you know, I like to set Google, Google alerts up for things, and uh, that's really helpful for keeping tabs on who's talking about a business and what they're saying and being able to either use that as content to share out like, hey, we were featured uh, on this website or mentioned here on this um, news article or to, you know, fix something if it if it wasn't consistent with your brand and your values. Allegra, don't be scared to Google yourself. Um, I, I'm sure everything will be just fine, but it's really helpful to know what is out there because I actually have a homework assignment for folks, um, for all of you here in a couple of slides, and you're going to have to do it anyway, but we'll keep moving along um, and talk about defining your identity and your strategy online. 
So the next step in this process is to define your online identity goals and then strategy. And what do you wanna achieve and communicate with your online identity? Who's your target audience? What are their needs? What are their preferences? Knowing some of these things is really helpful on and helping kind of curate your brand to your um, different digital profiles that you, that you keep. Um, you know, the goal is to position your business online in such a way that your target audience can easily identify and connect with you. Uh, you know, if you are, if, think about who your target audience is or your ideal customer and kind of, you know, do you know about their, their wants and their needs and their shopping habits and places that they go to to gain information and how they decide to make a purchase and other places that they purchase from, maybe if they go to other websites similar to yours um, to buy things, you know, what do they look like? Kind of what is the, the aesthetic and the appeal to it, um, the user experience? All of these things are really important because if they resonate really well with your target audience, um, then it's going to be great for your online business. Um, in the chat, I'd like to know a little bit about some of your businesses. You know, who do you know who your target audience is? Do you know their needs and preferences? Um, what kind of things have you done to differentiate yourself, but still, you know, find a way to um, appeal to that audience, yet, you know, retain the important part of your brand and your brand identity? I'd love to know. So please drop that in there. And, um, you know, your what you put in the chat is always really helpful to the other folks in the class, since we are digital. Um, we can't have a conversation in person and get to know one another. So please feel free to drop that in the chat. I put um, a, a screenshot of my website on here. Um, I, you know, uh, walk the walk when I talk about putting together brand guidelines. And so I put some together for my business. Um, I tried to create a website that was um, consistent with the, the look, um, the colors, the fonts. Uh, you can see that even the slides that I'm using today are consistent with the colors and the fonts that I use on my website. This is not my first um, set of brand guidelines for my business. Things looked a little bit different when I started. Um, my business, I started in 2017. And then during the pandemic, when we were stuck at home, I decided I'm gonna rebrand, I want different colors. And so I built a new website, um, changed things up a little bit, printed some new business cards um, and went back and made sure that I was consistent about presenting that look across um, all of my platforms. Um, I also, um, you know, got some great feedback from some of my clients and people that I work with, um, things that they liked or things that they didn't like um working with other businesses and using their websites and tried to keep mine as you know pretty um simple and easy to navigate as possible uh because those are things that are important to me and that I think about when I work with my clients all right let's get to the chat over here um let's see we have Jackie small manufacturing company that does a lot of custom jobs very cool Donna Peppers with Paxton Main Street um, target market is twofold. Want to grab our residents of Paxton, but also want to attract visitors to Paxton. Very cool. Love it. Cynthia, um, exact as Jackie. We create custom optics. Excellent. Um, Gianna, I'm a fine artist that is just starting out. Um, don't know how to figure out my target audience. I have no metrics to draw from. That's, um, totally reasonable and definitely something that a lot of folks uh, share when they're getting started, you know, um, who, who is our target audience? Um, I might challenge you to think about uh, the people that have, um, you know, purchased from you before, if you've gone to any shows, um, kind of the clientele of the shows, the location, price points of your products. Um, and then think about also how you can carry on facets of your artistry into your online presence when you're setting up your store so that you have some consistency. Um, I think that you'll find that there's probably going to be a lot of really um, cool components of your, your artwork that you can bring into your digital presence. 
Um, David's a freelance news reporter, target audiences, millennials. Um, excellent. Let's see, Jackie's talking more about what um, she manufactures and then Colleen, small farm, um, migrating to farm and garden themed merchandise. Love it, Colleen. Shirts, stickers, buttons, mugs, mostly with chickens and pigs. I love it. Um, but trying to go other animals too, ceramic flowers, mosaic animal artwork, excellent. Um, you know, thinking about who your audience is and the things um, that you're talking about, some of that swag, that merchandise, and also the theme, you can carry that over into your digital presence also on your website and your social media. Um, Allegra made to measure clothing for adults. That's very cool. I think you could do some really awesome things um, bringing that into um, a set of brand guidelines that can really define your identity and be able to connect with your, your target audience that you said is mostly female. Excellent. Thank you for all the feedback um, and conversation. Jessica's beekeeper with Honey Bee Teak and Mohammed, uh, want to reach a spectrum of pollinator lovers. Again, I think with um, beekeeping and honey, there's some really great opportunities for you to carry that um, theme into your, uh, across all of your digital presence. If you have a good set of brand guidelines, um, that'd be very helpful. Excellent. The great mix of folks on this call today. I'm glad that the scary weather outside didn't keep you from joining us today. Evelyn Shapiro, people who like to save money and enjoy access to free resources, readers, job seekers, crafters, families, business owners, the Champaign Public Library. Wonderful. Oh, sorry, I went backwards. There we go. All right, well, I, I said you'd have um, homework uh, a few slides ago, and this is it. It's not something that you have to turn back into me. It's for your um, use. And you'll get a copy of this tomorrow when um, Jordan sends out the slides from today. Uh, and she'll also send this with it as well. So a thriving business, I believe, feeds on generating engagement. I think engagement is the, the most um, important thing that you can have right now. It's absolutely crucial for a business to connect with customers and stay relevant. Um, being online throws um, kind of a level of difficulty in there because you're not seeing people face to face and being able to have a conversation with them. So that's why I'm really hammering the brand guidelines, consistency across platforms, and reviewing your digital existence so that there is consistency. Um, according to a Salesforce survey, uh, I'm not, not sh for sure if you're all familiar with Salesforce, but it's a, a customer um, we'll say management platform, um, keeping tabs of information of people, of what they do, what they purchase, um, way more than that. But, you know, Salesforce is a, is a huge player in the industry. And they say that 85% of consumers conduct research, research before they make a purchase online. And among the most used channels for research are websites and social media. So um, as a business, you need to have an effective kind of strategy and a way to kind of increase your brand awareness and grow, um, especially since it's going to be online. So building a good brand online and being consistent about it. So the first step uh, towards making sure that you have a solid digital existence is to do um, go through this checklist and do an audit of your online presence. Like I had mentioned before, I, I can't remember who said that they were afraid to um, Google themselves, but uh, now's the time, you gotta do it. If you're gonna finish the homework, um, I want you to think about all the places where your business um, has a presence online. Um, Google My Business, uh, it could be TripAdvisor or Yelp or Facebook reviews. Maybe you have a website, maybe you don't. Um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, X, formerly known as Twitter, um, you know, there's so many different places where you could have uh, information about your business living online. Um, even think like outside of 
these big things that are that are easy, like Google and website and social media. But think about where you might have a profile. Um, I do a lot of work with small farms, um, local ag, farmers markets and things like that. And there are so many different places where you can have a listing and a directory. Um, I'm thinking about, um, you know, buy fresh, buy local that I showed you before. That's a that's a directory. Um, Food Market Maker is another directory. Um, you know, Enjoy Illinois is a tourism directory for the state where maybe a business might have a profile. Your Main Street, your Chamber of Commerce, um, there could be listings, directories, a place for you to have a profile there too. Um, th there's just so many different places. And so all of these, you need to use this checklist and write all of those places down as the platform. Um, you might need more than one sheet of paper. I've gone through this with a client before and we actually used four sheets of paper to get through it, but we found so many different places that they hadn't even thought about in years that um, where they had some type of presence online. I want you to think about things that you do and don't have control over and put them on here. When I say you do have control over them, this is something that you can log in and either with log in with the username and password and be able to update the information yourself so you have control of it over it or there are external things where you've had to submit information to uh, another organization or business or person and then they are the ones that control that platform and then control the information that you have posted on there so write all of this down um, that's the platform then um, for the second column is the identity. Um, I want you to note here how you showcase your brand's identity on that platform. Do you have a complete profile listed? Is your logo on there? Uh, do you have a powerful but concise description of what you do, what your business does? Do you think that your description connects with the audience that you will find on that platform? And that's kind of a another layer of, um, you know, um, kind of difficulty that that for each platform is to try to think about the people that access that information, who they are, where they're located. Um, maybe in, for example, the platform you could put down Google My Business and your identity on there is, well, anybody could literally come to Google My Business to find you. And so maybe you have a more descriptive, um, you know, uh, information about your business on there, um, a lot of details. Um, your strategy is to make it easy for people to find and locate, um, contact, visit. Um, whereas maybe the platform is Instagram and you don't have as many words to work with in your bio. Um, and so you have to be a little more creative um, to be concise and getting your business description on there. Um, Perhaps you've updated your website or um, switched uh, URLs or something like that, got a new domain. Maybe it's not going to the right place. Making sure that everything links to the correct place is really important. Um, so those are things that I want you to check when you go to the platform and identity. The third column is strategy. Um, I want you to list your strategy for being on that platform in the third column. Is it awareness? Is it community building? Is it conversions? No, think about what is your strategy. And if you don't have one, figure out your purpose, your why of being on that platform and make a note in this column. The reason I ask you to do this is because you might find as you go through and you have listed all the different places where you live online, there might be platforms that those, those don't suit you anymore. They, they don't serve a purpose. They'll just take up time. Um, you know, maybe the, you have kind of adjusted your offerings on your website and the, the target audience for that platform, it, it's no longer appropriate for, for your business. So I want you to think about your strategy, your reason for being on there, um, and really help you kind of get into the mindset of spending more time in being efficient and effective and how you represent yourself online and ditch the stuff that no longer suits you. It's okay to do that. So we'll make sure that you have a copy of this checklist sent to you tomorrow. 
Um, my contact information is at the bottom of the checklist. So if you have any questions as you're filling it out, you're always welcome to um, email or call, uh, whatever you prefer. So the, the next step after we've um, done all this work is to optimize your online identity elements. So as you went through that worksheet, maybe you notice, wow, like my, I have a newer version of my logo that I should use, or, um, you know, perhaps like the logo got stretched out or the image doesn't fit right, or it cuts something off, you know, it's time to update some of those elements. Um, the elements that people see uh, when they visit your your profile online, whatever platform it might be on, is really sometimes the first impression that people get of you. And so you want to make sure that you're clear, you're consistent, that you're catchy, that you resonate with that customer, um, and you're you know being consistent. I, I think I said that word like five times, but um, consistency is key. Uh, it's also great to make sure that you optimize uh, your online identity to use uh, the correct keywords. If you use hashtags, put them in there. Um, some of my clients use emojis pretty consistently. And so they uh, put that on there as well. Um, you know, make sure that you find ways for your profiles to be searchable and to be um, eye-catching and really consistent with your brand guidelines that I hope you all put together. There's also tools that you can use um, to check compatibility of your online identity elements across different platforms and networks. Um, a couple that um, I've heard of are Noam or NameCheck. Um, those could be things you might wanna write down and check them out to see if that might be a help to you um, or something you might wanna consider after completing the digital existence checklist. So I'd like for you to go through and make sure that um, after you've completed the worksheet that you've gone to every pl platform that you can want to continue to use and optimize all of the places where you digitally exist and make sure that everything is updated. And most importantly, find ways to allow people to get back to you and get back to your e-commerce website so they can buy things. That's like the most important thing. If, the reason that you are doing all of this audit and gearing up is to either create or um, improve your e-commerce website, make sure that people have a way to get back to that to buy. So we've, we've kind of touched on website um, a little bit and thinking about your digital presence, but um, the next course, course number three, we're actually going to spend the whole time talking about websites and building an online store. But I want to put a teaser in here about taking an audit of your website uh, before we get started next time. Obviously, for e-commerce, your website is going to be a huge part of your digital existence and super important to review as you go through this audit process. Again, think about your target audiences. Is your website easy to navigate? And I might not want you to answer the question of, is your website easy to navigate? You might be able to and say, yeah, it's totally awful and we need to fix it. And that's why we're here. Or you could say, yeah, I can find what I'm looking for pretty easily. But you're also the people that are going to be in there every single day and know where most things are or can find things pretty easily. So perhaps ask someone um, else to uh, take a, a look at your website and find if it's easy to find things um, and give you some feedback. Also with your website, what's your overall strategy and your goal? Um, you know, is do I, I have found that um, some folks have a really great homepage and then when you start moving into the, the, the actual e-commerce component of it, it looks different, it doesn't flow the same way. Um, it might be hosted on another platform than what their, their homepage, the rest of their website is hosted on. And so there's some inconsistencies there, you know, really what's your strategy and goal? Um, if it's to get people to buy something, you want to make the process as easy as possible. Um, is your visual messaging consistent with your brand? Again, have you utilized brand guidelines and are you consistent with the color, the fonts, um, the look and the feel? 
of, of your brand in your website. Um, what's the typical customer experience like? Uh, are you noticing that people have to ask a lot of questions um, because they can't find something? Um, are you a brick and mortar store that has e-commerce? Are you noticing people are calling your store because they can't figure out how to do something on your website? Uh, you know, really kind of dial into what that experience is that customers have. Um, and is it is it <laughs> hindering your e-commerce performance? Um, are, you are you managing your SEO or search engine optimization? You know, are you building out proper pages on your website with um, proper titles and page descriptions and images that go along with each page? Um, you know, are you titling your images and having alt text and good descriptions and using um, keywords that are associated with your business as part of um, building out each page on your website? These are all really important things in um, managing your SEO or your search engine optimization. And lastly, um, this might not apply to every online business, but for many, it's helpful to have some type of high value content on your website that will keep people coming back for more. Um, whether that's, you know, guides to top trends or tips and tricks on how to use products or short little videos that explain how to do something or use something. Um, you know, I, I think about, um, like, a an online store that sells seeds for uh, vegetables, you know, perhaps um, they also include some short little videos with tips and tricks on planting the seeds or storing them or um, different information about different zones where those um, seeds could be planted that could be useful to the customer so that not only does that build up trust with the customer that they can trust that you're gonna give them good info and make sure that they have a good um, experience with your product, but also it builds um, a lot of like authenticity and um, kind of a, a sense of that they are the experts in the field and that they can refer back to you. Um, that just really makes the whole process, um, the whole user experience even more valuable. Oh, before, sorry guys, there we go. Uh, before we move on to the um, next slide, I did see some questions come in. Um, Allegra says, super specific question. I'm on Instagram and only on Facebook because I need a Facebook account to have a business account on Instagram. Do you have any tips for managing a passive Facebook account? My Facebook doesn't represent me well, but I don't want to spend time on it. I wish I could make it invisible. That's a really great question. Um you know, your your question reminds me of some of the farmers market vendors um, that I work with where for some of the their businesses, Instagram suits them much better than Facebook. For others, they have a Facebook, but they don't have an Instagram. Um, I, I think it depends on the business. Um, you don't have to um, promote that you have a Facebook page. Um, I know that in, a, in another example, uh, the person spends all their time on Instagram, doesn't put anything on Facebook. Um, I think that, you know, if you want to have something on there, you know, post a few times. Um, you, if you can, a week just to keep uh, consistency on your feed. But um, would love for you to bring that question back to our social media course that we have coming up. Uh, and let me see which week that is. Um, social media will be course number five. So um, two courses from now, or three courses from now, we'll talk more about that. Um, but I can give you some examples and show you um, what some of the folks have done that I work with. Um, Jessica says you can link your IG, your Instagram and Facebook, and then your post will automatically populate on Facebook. Um, auto posting, yep, yes. Um, so those are also options. I do have um, some recommendations of when not to allow auto post from one platform to the other. Again, that ties back to who your audience is, um, but we can certainly go into the details of that. Excellent. Very good. Thanks for um, following up with um, Allegra. 
Jessica and Donna. I appreciate that. All right, review and update regularly. I know at the beginning of the class I asked, do you do any reviewing on a regular schedule or what's your timeline for doing that? Um, you know, the, the last step in this process is to figure out what works for you and how you can review and update your online identity regularly so that you um, don't just set it and forget it. Let's not make this a static or a one-time thing, but make it something that you do pretty regularly to make sure you're keeping on top of um, what's what you have control over and what other people have control over and are saying about your business. You should always monitor and evaluate your online identity performance and feedback and make adjustments and improvements as needed. Um, you know, you can use tools like um, Google Analytics or Meta Insights to track and analyze your the different platforms that you're on online, seeing where you should put more energy into or maybe less energy into. Um, you can also use, like I said, Canva to polish and enhance your identity and your content. So if you notice that things are starting to look a little stale or you want to switch things up, it's great to, you know, keep with your brand, but also find new ways to bring in new imagery, um, new photos, keep things looking fresh, um, but also consistent with your brand. So find a timeline that works for you to, um, you know, monitor and keep tabs of your digital presence and keep that handout. Um, don't just do it this one time, go through and fix things, but keep it around so that you can just keep adding on to it. Um, if you have more profiles or even, you know, what I should do is make a column, um, an additional, a fourth column next to strategy of date so that you can see the last time that you went there to make an update so you can keep tabs of those things. Um, but I would definitely suggest um, pretty regular review of, of the platforms that you're on, maybe some weekly, maybe some monthly, and others quarterly, just to keep tabs on things, um, because this is all going to be online, and that's how people are talking about you, and you are talking about your business. That is the end of my slides for today's Auditing Your Digital Existence presentation. That's me, since you can't see me on the video. Um, once again, my name is Natalie Kenny Marquez. My email, my phone number, my website. Um, I'd love if you would join us at the, the next session where we're gonna go into a lot of specifics about the do's and don'ts of building an online store. Um, but with each of these courses, my goal is to kind of build upon the last one um, so that we can keep moving forward and set you up uh, for success as you launch your e-commerce business. I'm happy to answer any questions from today about um, auditing your digital existence, but we will be sure tomorrow for you to receive the handout so you can get to work on auditing all the platforms that you're on and making sure everything is updated. Thank you so much, Natalie. I do want to reiterate too, because I know some people joined us after we had already started, you will get a recording of today's session. So if there was something you missed or want to go back and listen to again, you will have access to that. And like Natalie mentioned throughout the session, you'll receive a copy of that uh, worksheet that she shared. So you're going to get um, a Dropbox link and that will include a copy of the presentation as a PDF along with that worksheet. And then you'll also get a link to the recording and links to register for the rest of this six part series. This was session two. So we do have four more sessions with Natalie, two of those being in February and two of them being in March. They are every other Monday from one to 2 p.m. on Zoom. So just wanted to make sure that everyone had that information. Um, we do have uh, a few chats coming in, but lots of thank yous, which agreed, Natalie, thank you so much. Um, I don't see any questions, but we'll give it a minute here because I do know we have some time left. We'll see if any come in. Sounds good. Thank you. Oh, Reg Cakes, Gluten-Free Bakery. So good. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, one of the things um, next week, or not next week, uh, the following um, Monday when we talk about the do's and don'ts of um, building an online store. Um, I do have some examples of some different platforms. Um, and so if you have specific questions, um, we can go over, you know, 
what um, what tips and tricks I've seen or, you know, the, the different ways different platforms could suit different businesses. Um, so that could be helpful to think of as you're going through and doing a, an audit of your digital presence, you know, really take a look at what is working for you and what isn't as you go through, you know, your website, your social media, um, and then come ready with questions for the online store um, course. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in, so I uh, we can go ahead and close out today's session. But I want to thank everyone for joining us, and thank you, Natalie, for presenting. And just uh, remind everyone to be careful out there; it is very slippery. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.